in advanced class. Let's go ahead and knock out your homework. I got the odd ones. You got the even ones. Uh, solve the system. Check your solution. We're checking the system. Let me get my pen out here. Uh, we know the first thing we're going to look for when they're asking for solutions, they are asking, am I going to get one solution? Am I going to get no solutions? Or am I going to get many solutions? Let's go ahead and check. Remember the rule. First, we check the uh, slope, that, that rate right here, okay? Uh, the rise over run, if you would. If they are the same, then we know that it's either going to be no solutions or many solutions, right? Infinitely. Uh, the second thing we check is the starting point. If the starting point is different, there are no solutions, right? And if they're the same, there are the infinite many solutions. So I, I see that we have the, the same slope of negative five. So that means I'll check my starting point. These are different. I got a positive one and a negative two. That means this is going to be no solutions. Let's check that out. No solutions. All right, now uh, you got number two, I got number three. Remember, you have to reposition these if you see that they're not in uh, the uh, slope inters, uh, or excuse me, uh, linear equation, if they're not written in the linear system equation, which is y equals mx plus b. And we see the first one here, y equals negative x, that is written as y equals mx plus b. This negative is really a negative 1, and since it doesn't have a b, it means it goes to the origin, it's proportion. The other one is not, which means we've got to get y, and this is an equal sign. I see this is 3x, but let us not forget that we've got to take this 4 and bring it over here. To do that, I'll have to subtract 4 from this side, which means I'll subtract 4 from this side. Now the y comes down, the equal sign comes down, the 3x comes down, and then negative 4. Now everything is in linear form. But I really didn't need to do that because the minute I seen that my x had a different slope, and one has negative 1, the other one has 3, I knew that there was only one solution. When my slope is not the same, there's only one solution. All right? And it says to check your solution, which means we're going to try to identify it. If I'm identifying this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the first thing I'm going to see is that I have one of them that has a slope of one, right? Y equals x minus uh, x, uh, or excuse me, y equals negative x. The other one says, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. The other one has a uh, y equals 3x minus 4. So since both of these are y, I can put the numbers equal to each other. And I'm going to do that over here. So right now we have y equals negative x. So I'm going to put negative x over here and say that it's equal to 3x minus 4. Now i got to combine my like terms. I have x's on both sides. So I'm going to take uh, this x, I'll put this 3x, and put negative 3x over here, which means I'll take away 3x over here. Now I bring down the negative 4, which means now I'm going to put negative 3 and negative 1, make negative 4x. The equal sign comes down. Now I've got to divide negative 4 away so I can find out what x is, which means I'll divide negative 4 from this side. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, so x is going to be equal to 1. Now I can plug that into any one of my equations here, and I'm going to plug it into this one, because if y is negative x and x is 1, that means that y is equal to negative 1, right? So uh, my coordinates should be, remember this is written as x, y here. 
if x is 1, y is negative 1. All right, let's check our answer. 1 and negative 1, perfectly done. All right, uh, 4 is for you to do. Remember, find the value of x. You know enough about triangles now to figure that out. Number 5 says, using a scatter plot, the table shows the average price in dollars of jeans sold at different stores and the number of pair of jeans sold at each store in one month. Okay, uh, represent the data in a coordinate plane. If I did that, I'd have to draw this coordinate plane out. I see that when X is 22, Y is 152, right? And then when X is 40, then Y is 94. When X is 28, then Y is 134. When X is 35, Y is about, looks like 110. And then when X is 46, y is 81. So we did that. It looks like we, uh, we made the table, right? Uh, we had the table and we showed this in a represent the data on a quarter plane, okay? So now it's saying, well, I guess that's really it, isn't it? Number five just says represent it. Uh, that's all you had to do. Let's go to number seven. Uh, it says make a scatter plot. Make a scatter plot of the data. Identify any outlier gaps or clusters. Well, scatter plot means we're going to go ahead and put our data out here. Uh, we see when x is 82, that's about here. And we have uh, y is 102. Okay. Um, about right there. Actually, right here. Okay. Because this has to be right in between 90 and 120 has to be 105. So 102 would be right there. Then 32 would be 22, right? 32 would be 22. And 40 would be 38. 40 uh, would be 38 right there. And uh, let's see. Yeah, because this would be, actually this would have to be 45. So this would be 40. This would be 38. Uh, 44 would be 41, so probably that one. Then uh, 86 would be 100. 86 would be right here. Yeah. Um, 84 would be 98. Okay, 84 would be about right here, and then 98 would be about right there. Uh, 83 and 97, let's see, 83 and 97, okay. 89 and 110, 89 and 110 would be about right there. Um, actually, probably here, because we said this was 115. Um, let's see. Can this be 110? Oh, no, I'm sorry. This would be 105. So, yeah, that would be the 110. Then 102 and 63, 102 would be about right here and 63 there. And then 43 and 40. So um, it says make a scatter plot, identifying the outlier gaps or clusters. Well, the outliers to me, I uh, remember they're the ones that are way away from the data. I would say it would be this, uh, looks like 32 and 22. Uh, let's see, gaps. <clears throat> There's definite gap between, um, looks like maybe 40. It's 30, 45, right? Uh, between 45 and it looks like maybe about, uh, this is 80, maybe about 85, right? Somewhere around, I would say at least uh, 45 to 80, somewhere around there. And then uh, clusters. And our clusters are mainly here in the areas where we see uh, it's about 80, oh, it looks like anywhere from, 82 to 86 or 89, right? Uh, and then we see that they're clustering around the, really around the uh, 90 to 95 to 100 mark, right? So you could even might say this is an outlier itself. Um, this 
and when sitting at about 102, right, and 63. So, um, oops, the outliers are 102 and 63, well, just like we said over here. The gaps from, <clears throat> I guess that's the only outlier because this is, even though it's not with this group, it's not far, far away from it at least, right? It, it looks like it's all coming upward in this direction in a positive association except for this one here. And the gaps are from 44, just like I said here, to about 82, all right? Uh, and from about 82 uh, to, or, or the, excuse me, the uh, clusters are from 82, right, to 89. All right, uh, number eight is for you to do. I'm gonna keep moving on. Uh, number nine, so describe the relationship between the data. I would say there's no association here. I see nothing. I, if, if this wasn't here, I might say it's a negative association because it's kind of, going downward from here. I guess we could call this a very weak negative association. So as X increases, right, as X gets bigger, Y decreases, right? So the scatter plot shows a weak negative as linear association. And this was the only one here that really kept me from saying strongly it was a weak when you got this outlier here at 15 and 10. Uh, and there it says, there's an outlier at 15 and 10. Uh, and a gap in, uh, between X values from X is 15 to X is 25. So from here to 25, there's hardly anything there, just these two here. Uh, most of the data is either before or after. On number 11, and let's check that one out. I would call this a no association. This is all over the place. I don't see where it gets bigger uh, or smaller. I would definitely, see, I mean, you could argue it's getting smaller, except for these two outliers. You could say it's getting bigger, except maybe these two outliers. But I'm going to go with no association at all. Um, are there gaps? I mean, if you want this, no, not really. Uh, just, I'm going to go with uh, the points show no pattern at all. So the scatter plot shows no relationship. There are no outliers, gaps, or clusters. It's just no association at all. Nothing you can make uh, sense out of, out of this data. So there's nothing you can really predict. That's what we try to do. We try to make a prediction of things, right? Like over here, we could say, well, eventually it's going to get down to here, right? Uh, over here, you can see that, well, once we're past uh, between 15 and uh, 25, right? Then it's going to go up. But over here, there's really no prediction you can make at all. Let's go to number 13. Uh, 12 is for you to do. 13 says the table shows the average price per pound for honey at a store from 2019 to 2022. Describe the relationship. All right, what is the relationship? As the years go by, right, as more years go by, the price is going up. This is a positive, right? This is a positive relationship because as X gets bigger, right, as X goes on, Y also gets bigger, right? So, as the year increases, the price per pound of honey increases. So the data shows a strong positive linear relationship, a positive association. And I'm not sure it's linear. I guess we would have to look at this and see for every year that goes by how much it exactly it's going up. Um, if I was to say, well, let's see, we got an increase here of 35 plus 10, that'd be 45. Um, but over here, this is not exactly 45, is it? Right? Because it only went up, uh, it actually went up 60 from here to here. And from here to here, it went up a dollar, um, a dollar 20. So yeah, I would say it's a, uh, it's a strong positive winner relationship, but it is definitely not proportional. All right, uh, number 14 is for you to do, number 15 is mine. The scatter plot shows the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn, okay, that is produced by a farm over the last 10 years. As you can see, as the more rain we get, right, especially when we're, we're in the range of 200, uh, looks like uh, millimeters, right, to about, well, I, this must be 250, so about 275, we really get a lot 
right? A lot of uh, our best corn production there. Um, but over here, when we have, I mean, even more rain, we even get more corn, don't we? This shows a strong association, except for this one outlier uh, over here. <clears throat> so uh, let's see, the scatter plot shows the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn produced by the farm over the last 10 years describe the relationship between the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn produced. Uh, the more rain you get, well, <laughs> the more corn you produce. So the points appear to lie close to a line with a positive slope as X increases, Y increases. So the relationship between the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn produced is a strong positive linear relationship. All right, that means it's going upward, right? And uh, pretty close to a line, not perfectly, but pretty close. Uh, number 17, the scatter plot shows the total, and I'm just gonna move this here, uh, the total earnings, wages, and tips a food server during one day. Uh, it looks like as every hour that goes by, the amount of tips that he gets grows and grows and grows, doesn't it? So about how many hours must the server work to earn $70? Well, $70 would be about right here, right? And I would say probably about three and a half hours, right? So put him right at about $70. So I would say three and a half hours. Uh, the point at X equals three, okay, uh, has a value below 70, and the point of x to y equals three, um, okay, y equals, and the point at y equals three has a y value of absolute 70. So let's see here, um, the point at y equals three has a value of 70 above 70. I'm gonna, I really don't understand what they mean by that. I'm thinking they meant at four when X is four, has a Y value above 70. So I'm gonna change that because it makes no sense and easy to change uh, on the screen. So, or, or on the uh, lesson plan. So I'm gonna put uh, X equals four. Let me scratch this out. It has a y value above 70. So the value between three and four will yield a y value of 70. Now you can estimate the server would work three and a half hours. Hey, that's exactly what we guessed. Three and a half hours earn $70. All right. Uh, about how much does the server earn after five hours of work? Five hours of work, he earns about, well, if this is 80, we can put this is 90, I would say about $85 in tips. So draw a horizontal line from point that has an X value of five, right? And uh, it crosses the Y axis is about 85, that's what we said. So the server earns about $85 for work and five, uh, for five hours of work, yes. All right, so the horizontal line would be drawing a line this way, right? And you would see that would be about 85. All right, describe the relationship shown by the data. Well, as the work, as the hours of work increases, the earnings increase. So the scatter plot shows a strong, positive, linear relationship, right? As hours go by, he earns more money. Uh, 18 years to do, 19 here says the scatter plot shows the outdoor temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and the length of time in hours students spend outside, all right? Does it appear that the temperature affects the amount of time students spend outside? Well, uh, let's see, the, the hotter it is, right, the colder it is, it seems like not too many people are outside at all, right? Uh, when it's about 40 degrees, you've got a couple people that are going outside. Uh, when you get to about, well, 60 degrees, still one, right? And this 40 degrees could be people out sledding, right? <clears throat> um, and then when you get to about 65 to 80 degrees, right, and the 85 degrees, to 90, well, the hotter it gets, the more people are outside, right? So uh, does it appear that temperature affects the amount of time students spend outside? Yeah, the warmer it gets, the more kids want to be outside. But this scatter plot says no. The scatter plot shows that there is no relationship 
between the temperature and the time students went outside. Let's look closely at this because I kind of felt like we had one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, but what is this really saying? Uh, we had, remember, this is time outside. And oh, I see, this isn't the number of people outside. So when it was 40 degrees outside, we actually had people, one person spent three hours outside, another person seven hours. Oh, okay. And now we're seeing that this correlation, really there's no association at all because some people, uh, if you take the average of the time, okay, we got seven, three, and we got one, three again, and then six. And if we count those one, two, three, four, five, or this one, two, three, four, five, we're probably going to have close to about the same amount of time. So we got people enjoying the snow and we have people enjoying the summer. So I apologize. I did not see where it said hours. I thought this was the number of people uh, that were hanging outside, but it's actually the number of hours they spent outside. Now, number 20 is yours, and which means that 21 is mine. The scatter plot shows the number of drifting scooters sold by a company, all right? Uh, drifting scooters, all right? And it shows as years have gone by, the numbers sold seem to be going down, right? Uh, in 2010, there were 1,200 drifting scooters for sale, right? The number sold, I'm gonna really check my, uh, what my units are this time. And then as we've gotten into 2000, looks like 21, 22 over here, we've only got about 650, no, 700 that are on sale. So in what year were uh, 1,000 scooters sold? 1,000 scooters were sold in 2000 and uh, looks like 18. Our vertical line from the point, the value 1,000, it crosses X axis at 2018, so 1,000 drifting scooters were sold in 2018, exactly what I said. Uh, about how many scooters were sold in 2019? Well, if this is 2018, if this is 2020, this must be 2019, and it's not quite at 1,000, uh, but it's way above 800. I want to say it's about 950. Uh, so we draw a horizontal line to the point that has a X value of 2019. It crosses at about 950. So in 2019, about 950 drifting scooters were sold. All right. Uh, let's go to C, describe the relationship shown by the data. Uh, as the years have passed, the sales has decreased, is what I would say. As the years increase, the number of drifting scooters sold decreases. So Scatter plot shows a strong negative linear relationship. Assuming this trend continues, in what year are about 500 drifting scooters sold? Well, 500 would be right here. So if we were to follow this out, uh, and remember, this is if this is 2019, this is 2020, this must be 2021, they seem to be going down at a rate. Uh, steadily like that i'm going to go with that to be 600 in 2022 i'm going to say about 2023 right or maybe 2024 uh it seems to me that's when it would happen so um each year about 100 fewer drifting scooters are sold in 2021 about 700 were sold right uh so at about 500 drifting scooters would be sold in 2023, okay? <clears throat> I'm not sure I totally agree with what they just said because it said each year about 100 fewer drifting scooters are sold. So 2021 is here, right? Or well, yeah, yeah, because this would be 2022, so 2023, that is accurate. 2023, about 500 drifting scooters would be sold. All right, and it looks like that's the end of the homework. So, rest is on you to do. I'll see you in class for grading and have a great night.